review of match day 27, Bundesliga 1, German Bundesliga, Football Bundesliga of the season 2018-2019 on the 1st of April. Um, and uh, well, what did we have over the weekend? First of all, we look at the result, we look how the games went, we compare the perfect betting game that I set up again myself with my own prices against betting market or bet market or something like that I don't know. and going through the games and um, well yeah as I said I, I, I would love to talk a lot more about football and its downsides <laughs> Well, in the sense of, I would like to make it grow and make it better, and I think they are going further away from that. It's not just in commentary, but it's also in rules, because the rules are no good. And you could do a lot to improve there. And first of all, one example would be, think positive in the sense of scoring goals. That's what the Americans did in 1994 when World Cup was um, was uh, played there. Was um, yeah, um, I, I can't, can't think of a better word now. Uh, it was in 1994. The World Cup was there, and they they instantly said, "Well, football, very good game, very exciting, very easy to play, but what we need are some more goals, goal mouth action." And, I mean, Americans would always say, first of all, we got to entertain the people. They, want, they ought to buy this, event, all those events, this game. They have to support us financially. They have to say, we love it, we are ready to pay for it. And if no one ever thinks about this because they all say well football is so big so you don't need to care for the spectators well you have to care at some point and uh, anyway if you wouldn't need to care then you could still maybe think about it what they would love what they would like to see what the excitement makes and um, what is uh, interesting about the game or what we could do to make it better. And if they all say before a game starts, well, oh, uh, I'm, I'm excited about the game. There's a game to start tonight. And why would you be excited? Do you like this team? Do you like that team? No, no, I would like to see some goals. And then you just see a single one and you would say, well, that was disappointing a bit. It was just a single goal. Oh, this game wasn't so good with 1-1. One, one. No, no, I would like to see some more goals. Well, you can say, German Bundesliga here, we don't have the problem at the moment. Once again, 29 goals scored in 9 games, so that's an average of 3.22 per game. And you could always say, well, there is enough excitement. But all around the world, there are other games played, other leagues, and then you very often see 0-0, 1-0, 0-1, 1-1. First of all, think positive. You would like to have some more goals. If you support this idea, then you could say, well, what would we need to do to get those more goals? Then I would say, well, apply the rules, first of all, for a start. The rules, they are being applied, or what do you mean? Well, what I mean is, if an attacking player, a striker, takes a deep breath and the defender goes to the ground, then this is considered a striker's offense. This is a foul. He shouldn't do that. I mean, I, I'm exaggerating, but if the striker does, I mean, maybe the, the smallest little thing or something, sometimes they just defend against an attack from the, from the defender. So... The defender starts, and then they said, well, why am I not allowed to do the same that you do to me? And then the referees would always say, no, sorry, you can't do that, that's a foul. And then he says, well, the other one has done the same to me. 
No, no. Striker's offense counts first. Counts more. So this is a free kick. And he points the other way. Why he would do that? I can also tell you. Because he would be afraid that there is a goal to come. There's a goal coming from this attack. Then, if there, there would a goal be coming from this attack, then you, would say, uh, then you could say, well, now the game is decided. It's 1-0. It's this game over. They can't score a goal because no one can score a goal. And uh, so I can't do that. And especially could, they could say afterwards, well, didn't you see that there? That the striker uh, was somehow impeding his... Impeding his uh, um, counterpart so the goal should not stand and so you would have to um, uh, say some excuses for that some explanation why the goal stood and why this mistake decided the game and um, there's another point about it because if it is coming closer to the goal and it's quite often happening, and especially if you allow the striker to do the same that the defender does. You know, they just start some pushing, they do some holding, they both do the same to each other. But if he lets game go on, play go on, then they approach the area, and all of a sudden they are inside the area, and maybe the defender gets a bit more excited about it, and they said, oh, if I don't stop him now, he's going to score a goal. So you would do this and he would start to maybe offend oh, what is it <laughs> impede impede a bit more than that than he did before to stop this action then you would all of a sudden have to think about a penalty oh but i can't give a penalty now because again a penalty is always too much of a of a penalty <laughs> it's a penalty it's a punishment it is too much of a, uh, because he may have scored a goal or he may have crossed them ball inside the, the area or there was a dangerous attack but it was not a goal at all which a penalty almost is 85 percent right now of the penalties are goals mm. so that's what he tries to avoid so rather stop the attack before that if you see a corner coming in what would you see in the area you see some pushing some sh shouting some <laughs> Whatever it is, I mean, they all take their actions. And when you hear the whistle blown by the referee, then it's always the same direction, away from the goal. So we, we got to go this way. No goal, no goal. We can't give a penalty. But something went on. So he stopped the play away from the goal. And they all support this. And they all say, well... And if the commentator, he sees it, then he hears the whistle and he says, well, he must have seen something. Well, I can't see it, but it must have been something. So we don't care. But if he would give a penalty, then I would have six angles with the camera and say, well, what? where should this have been a penalty? There was no penalty, no offense at all. What did he see there? He just blew the whistle and said penalty. Then he would say, well, <laughs> I saw some, <laughs> I don't know. Like, as he did when he, when he whistles for the defending side, then it's the same thing. But when he does it for the defending side, in favor of them, away from the goal, then, then there would be no replays at all. No one would care. Then they would say, it must have been something, we don't care, no goal. So, but it's always no goal, so why, why worry? And all this kind of thinking is going against the defend uh, the attacking sides. It's favoring the defenders. It's going against the the attacking sides, and so and if you would understand this mismatch, it's an injustice within the game. It's nothing to do with favoring a single team or um, um, uh, somehow you know when, when after the game then they say, well, we should have had a penalty here, and then uh, um, they were right and they were given right then they, they would say, well, this was like, referee was against us. It's not the case at all. He's against the goal somehow. Over the weekend, we had about two situations at least. I mean, yeah, well, it, 
two very obvious ones. And even in, comment, uh, in the commentary after, after the games, they said, well, this was a penalty. And then they say, well, it's a very obvious penalty, they said in the commentary. And then they said, why wouldn't the VAR, the video assistant referee, why wouldn't he intervene there? He should have done so, but he hasn't done it. And then you think, well, even the VAR takes on this concept and he says, well, maybe there was a penalty. I'm not going to intervene. Let the game go on. And if he's asked afterward, well, didn't you see this was a penalty? Yeah, sure, we saw it. But we thought, well, this was not a major, major mistake. I mean, you can give it or you can leave it. But then they say, well, this was pretty obvious. Yeah, maybe 90% penalty, but 10%, <laughs> I don't know. It's so silly. I mean, the VAR doesn't help at all. It's the kind of thinking that would help. And all the action that's been, been stopped uh, uh, once again, if the offside uh, situations, I mean, maybe they, they are, yeah, no, they are not improving at all on that, also not with the VAR, but but they instantly stopped the play and, and they raised the flag. And there was one, one attack uh, on, on uh, Sunday that was Bundesliga 2, where there was an attacker somewhere within a bulk of players and, and the shot went through those three players. So it was a direct attempt on goal. And, and the ball went through, you think, in the first place. And the goalkeeper wouldn't stop it. And, and then it was given offside. Because they say this attacking player, first of all, his back was closer to the goal than the two defenders' backs. Because they were all turning to the ball. So they, they were, he was shooting, uh, the shot was taken at them more or less, but the ball went by. So this was, the, the, the attacker was standing in the way, you can say. But... With his back just maybe two inches offside, I don't know, one inch offside. Well, why would you stop the play? And it was a direct attempt. But he was standing in the line of this shot, so the goalkeeper was unable. And the, but the second replay may have showed that the ball even touched the attacker somewhere here. So they said, well, then it's very clear offside because he even touched the ball. But there's no chance at all that the linesman who raised his flag could have seen that. So he would have raised his flag no matter what. So now if you th think about it now, then you know it's very obvious. They tried to avoid the goals. This is a reflex that's trying to stop the attacks. And this is also directed against the attackers. So whenever the flag went up, it's a reflex. And then they say 9 out of 10 cases when they discover an error in the decision, then they say, well, this was no offside, but it's no, it's very close and you can't blame him for that. I mean, this was just a reflex. So, and if you would, and this is what the Americans did in 1994, then they said, when in doubt, favor the attack. So when in doubt, just nail your arm to the, <laughs> to your, Sorry, I went to your body. Nail it. Don't raise the flag. This, stop that reflex, right? That's what they told them. But they are doing the opposite now, instead of uh, the thinking from 1994. Mm. Anyway, ah, it was a just this call. What do you call it? This call? Um, 29 goals. They all went in favor of the home side, 24-5. Which was, I mean, if you see here, home sides were expected to win by two and a half. They didn't even play better because even a wayside should have won by half a goal. But all the goals went in favor of the home side, which was, I mean, we can go through game by game, but it wasn't the case uh, all season. But now the home advantage grew with that, and it's a bit too big now uh, with all those home wins here this time. In Hoffenheim against Leverkusen, uh, we did see a 4-1 win. We did see s s very small favorites, Hoffenheim, and in fact, Leverkusen were the better side. And this I would instantly sign, sign because from start to finish, it was always Leverkusen. They produced a bit more than expected, while Hoffenheim produced clearly less. So this was 
I mean, it was just um, uh, the stats uh, were clearly on Leverkusen's side, and as it was, um, yeah, usually <clears throat> in Hoffenheim having the lead, they could say, well, we were trying to defend, we were waiting for the chances on the break, which is also right in some sense, but still for me this is upside down. I mean, Leverkusen were too good, they, they should have scored on plenty of occasions, and uh, it's just, uh, well, I can't say sad result, because Leverk uh, Hoffenheim had, uh, did have some bad luck before, but in this case you can say, well, Leverkusen and Peter Bosch, and I instantly said when he came here, well, as, as soon as this, this pays off, the, the attacking football uh, he is trying to to um, to introduce um, is, is, it pays off uh, he's a happy man and, and they're all happy with that and if the results turn against him it will be uh, hard times and the, all those Dutch coaches they can't understand that and um, uh, why they are uh, and simply ask all those silly questions in this case Leverkusen were just a better side so it's a false result and it's nothing to do with their over optimistic play or something like that it was all that has got, got to do with is bad luck and but uh, people wouldn't understand that but maybe they will start to understand that at some point Freiburg Bayern uh, and here you see uh, 80 point, 80, 0.81 goals Leverkusen were better than expected so this is very one side game more or less. Of course, here I, I will uh, happily agree that uh, with Hoffenheim having the goals, they could say, well, we don't need, need to do that much and the, the chances are growing in size. But if Leverkusen get the 2-2 at some point or something like that, or an early goal in, in their favor, then okay, you will have uh, different stats. But even the 2-2 might still, I mean, you don't find the spaces anymore or you, you are, uh, what is it called, the momentum. Is, is switching to Leverkusen. Uh, anyway, so a lot could have ha happened. It was in favor of them. Here, uh, um, here in uh, Freiburg Bayern, I mean, Freiburg started brightly, scored a goal, could have scored some more. They had their chances for even some more goals than expected, which is quite a lot against Bayern, 1.17 goals. I mean, you see here, Hoffenheim had only chance for 1.16 goals. Freiburg even more than that, but the one, the, what Bayern played there and how many chances they had and how many, how, how many of them uh, very clear-cut chances, which is not reflected in here because I can't do that, I don't do that uh, as X goals do, because I, I wouldn't see that coming and I wouldn't see that, yeah, well, there's no way, I, I explained this in a different video, video. Still, they had by far enough to claim a very, very well-deserved victory and now they are talking about crisis again because they produced so many excellent chances the ball wouldn't go in, and it's crisis. If Dortmund scored two late goals, because in the first one the wall was more than one yard too far away from the ball, and that's what the referee simply did. I mean, you see that instantly. This is too far away. I mean, he in the spray, and he put it around the five-yard box, and the ball was outside the area. So you, you instantly understand that this is more than. Uh, 10 yards. It was t uh, it was 11 yards. So it was like, well, it was more than that. 11 and a half, I don't know. It was more than, uh, than one yard too far away. The wall was placed and it was 91 uh, minute, minutes. Minute 91. And then Dortmund scored the goal. So crisis in Bayern, they say, and <laughs> very good Dortmund, which they didn't play this time, not at all. I mean, Wolfsburg could have, with this game they played, they could very well claim, I mean, being 0.85 goals better than expected, this is even more than Leverkusen were better, they can easily claim we did deserve a draw here. Although you, you would still have to say, well, Dortmund with a small edge. Mm. Anyway, and um, so uh, this is another very false and misleading results. Result. Here we have Düsseldorf against Gladbach, another one of uh, this kind. Even more, uh, well, like the other one, 0.81 goals. And, uh, but here we had these three goals uh, for uh, Düsseldorf when the game just started. But actually, 
at this stage also Gladbach had some excellent chances, so they couldn't believe they, they didn't score. <laughs> they just conceded three shots, three goals, so that's it. And of course, from then on, Düsseldorf can say, well, we, we could um, uh, retreat a bit and we could wait for them coming, but the, as many chances as they allowed at any point, if Gladbach scored an earlier goal than they did, which was after 85, 87, I don't know, uh, minutes, uh, uh, then the game can still uh, go the other way. I mean, not go the other way, but 3-1 and still it's some, some mountain to climb. But mm, Gladbach may well have had a very fair chance. This 3-1 came too late, although they very well deserved it. Mm. Nuremberg Augsburg was uh, more or less the way expected. Nuremberg with a, with a very small edge, but the, I expected the very small edge to go to Augsburg to be 0.04 goals better. Instead, Liber, uh, Nuremberg were 0.11 goals better. So it was 0.15, so in that sense, Nuremberg can claim we were better than expected, so we should have got, gotten a good result. Also, you could say, well, they scored the first one after 52 minutes from a set piece, which is, yeah, okay, they, they all practice these and, and set pieces are um, some danger, uh, always some danger. But um, uh, uh, after that, they could say, well, Augsburg, now they needed to produce something which they were unable to, and they even uh, added to their lead. So one can say here, they did deserve this win somehow. In Werner Leipzig, another misleading result, mm, about as misleading as the one, or even more, should I say, as the one in dortmund Wolfsburg, because uh, here Mainz were um, 1.3 goals better. Here I would say the difference is that Werner did have a lead. So. Um, I mean, uh, Dortmund scored the first one after 91 minutes, and so the, 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 the stats are fully reflecting the ongoings at the scoreline of 0-0. Uh, except if you would take off these two shots, then it was an even game until then, more or less. Uh, uh, while this one, I mean, was maybe close to an even game, but it was at the scoreline of 1-0, 2-0, 3, uh, what was it, 2-1, uh, Mainz pulled one back, 2-1. Uh, uh, so it was 1-0, 2-0, 2-1. First goal was after five minutes, very early for Bern. So a very different story. Stats uh, clearly here even more on Mainz side, which is um, going along with the scoreline. So all those results are, well, all these four results are misleading, whereby the difference between uh, Düsseldorf and Werder, which are the same scoreline, 3-1, um, are different to these two, uh, because here it, it took some time for, for Hoffenheim to take the lead. It was 1-1, and then it was 2-1, and, and, and at that stage Leverkusen produced a lot. But they, they were better throughout, for, as far as I can see. Anyway, Gladbach, uh, Leipzig against Hertha was a pretty one-sided, you could say, and 0.42 goals. But here, I mean, it was for a while, it was 1-0, and after the, was it, uh, no, when was the second, right after the break, right? The second. Well, I, Hertha didn't find an answer, as simple as that. I mean, they couldn't produce anything, that's the whole story. Meaningless, it was maybe 1-0, uh, at some point, and, and had I were unable, then it was 2 0, they were still unable, then it was, you know, 3 0, 4 0, 5 0. Um, they still couldn't react. So, this was a, one of the very rare exceptions, exceptions here, what was deserved, of course, still by clearly uh, too big a margin. In Hannover Schalke, another very wrong result, this time going against the home side. I mean, they both didn't produce anything or a lot. I mean, uh, Hannover as much as expected, which is still not that much. But when I say Freiburg had a lot and Hannover had even more, they all had some chances. Also Nuremberg, okay, this is all of them close. This love the, the least of all those, but they had those three goals um, in their backs. What is it? In their, in their bags, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> in their bags already. 
but they, they produced about the same and Hanover most of it, which was in the second half after they were a goal down. But Schalke were miserable. They were no good at all. I mean, they were even a lot worse than I expected. And, and this was just a terrible display. I mean, this one goal, you can even say this was a very lucky goal, which they are pretty right about when, when this uh, cross was brought in. There were four defenders uh, closing down this uh, attacker and he still got the ball past them but he didn't intend to get it uh, where it landed. And then there was one, one touch, the first touch, you have to say it was perfect but maybe it was still a bit lucky that he got it right into his stride and then the shot was perfect. So it was one goal that just happened and whatever Hanover tried, it didn't um, work out. And but they should have at least uh, equalized, and then so it was just misery. What Schalke, this was I can't no, 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 this was so awful. I mean, uh, I mean, now they say Hugh Stevens and the nil uh, stands, and that's what he always you know, that's what he's famous for. Um, but it was just awful, awful, it was awful. Frankfurt Stuttgart. It was, um, I mean, Frankfurt were okay, I would say. I mean, no, 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 this is wrong. If they were just those 0.66 goals. But still, this 1.69, as you see here, is one of the very top. Apart from this 1.89 that Leipzig had, it is the top value. Okay, let's take Dortmund. Uh, well, uh, there were plenty of chances at either end. But, uh, but it's uh, one of the top values. There are, then I would add to their, in their favor, I would even add to that, that those strikers, I mean, throughout the season, uh, they always show that they are doing better. So if the computer says 1.69, then you could say, well, with these strikers, it's 2.34, maybe, right? Because they are so good. And this was probably again, and I mentioned this guy Kostic whenever I say all those itches, Jovic and Rebic, and... Gacinovic, who has just a single goal uh, contribution, but still maybe you could mention him, but uh, Kostic is the fourth, and Alain, of course, the French striker. But um, he went off. But anyway, well, he was injured somehow. But uh, anyway, uh, all those, and Alain is excellent as well, but you would, you would now, at the moment, you would, you would mention the other ones first. And now Kostic scored the goals, but he did it. Uh, uh, like the others did, do usually. I mean, same style. They all copy their styles. I don't know, because they watch each other in training. I don't know. Anyway, I would still say deserved victor victory. Stuttgart had about uh, exactly as much as expected, and they are very right, which Weinzierl coach said after the game. Uh, the, the goal came with a half-time whistle. They could have conceded before, they also had their chances, so it could have been nil nil one nil nil one. Of course, any of those. But uh, Frankfurt were closer, I would say. But but uh, but this is sometimes a matter of timing because you think, okay, nil nil at halftime. Let's see what we can do. And then it's one nil. All of a sudden, it's going again against you. Uh, and so he's very right that this uh, killed their game, uh, part of uh, kind kind of. But um, okay. Here, uh, stats would say Frankfurt were not as good ex as expected. I would say they were do doing okay. Now we see here the results entered. Now we can go through once again the payouts. Or oh, let's check it here. As I said, I mean, in reality, I would have or I did support Leverkusen actually. And I was, I mean, I can't say. You, you, all you see here is how close this market is. I mean, in reality, I was supporting Leverkusen. And I, will, I did take the right side there. And it, of course, it's, it's more or less meaningless, even you can say here. Uh, we are, we are uh, in line with the, with the evaluations. This is nothing. Mm. Still here, it's favoring uh, me. While in reality, uh, I would have been a lot happier if Leverkusen would have won the game. No draw, which was pretty obvious because there were many chances. And... Uh, so I was right about this draw, but I was also right about the side in reality, but I won here, which is uh, to me uh, meaningless, of course, because I would uh, favor to have uh, real money. But um, here in Freiburg, uh, you can say I was right, Mark was right, it was just uh, irrelevant. I mean, 
the draw still cost me a bit, which is of course absolutely meaningless in the long run. Of course, with the result, I was a bit closer to, to this win here, to this massive win, uh, compared to, well, actually, even money more or, more or less, right? So I could just win. Well, it still counts in the end if you lose some money. Here, I was just happy to avoid the draw. Also, meaningless deviation going into my favor, which I shouldn't, I mean, but Gladbach would have been fine too, so I can only say uh, be happy with the, uh, with the result to avoid the draw. That's all, but I was right with that, right? So, um, but what I wanted to say is uh, how close uh, this market is, and there's 1%, 2% differences. You can't really measure them uh, within the... I'm trying to, and I'm, I'm showing here, but as I explain the games right now, when I say, well, three goals uh, uh, gifted, to Düsseldorf from then on one-sided or before already it was just you know so so uh, well why would you start with uh, saying you were right you were wrong uh, and 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 how easy it is that fortune uh, turns against you and uh, or in your favor and so it's a very very narrow uh, margin we are talking about and and if you have hundreds and thousands of games you could say then maybe this works out, uh, this whole concept here. But um, it, it is hard to measure this in single games, right? Here, I, I, I have this win, so to say, the maximum win, meaningless. Here, I also have the right side, which is still meaningless. And I, I, if I'm smiling, I mean, I'm just saying anything could have happened. It was still a right, proper evaluation. Uh, so all I can say in Verda, uh, Stats would say I was very lucky and I wouldn't have uh, to change that Werder were lucky a couple of times now also in Leverkusen when they win That's what I said about Bosch. He lost now two games like that with being clearly a better side and still lost And now they would say again. Well, what is this offensive football good for you? They don't score the goals and they concede in stats. So all the goals they don't score they get yeah. uh, I wasn't right here, I would say, right? We, we will make a count uh, afterwards. Here I was very right, still I have to pay this, but I can be happy with these two late goals because they, they saved me 200 euro mm. on the draw. As there had been so many chances for 3.2 goals, 3.24, I can still say I was right about the draw because, well, a goal could have happened anytime, although they are closer to, uh, to expected than... Uh, than um, uh, no, closer, yeah, with the, with the way they played, they were closer to equality than expected. So I was then wrong again about the draw. But um, of course, as I was a lot closer to this heavy win, I would also, I mean, I would also say, well, I was absolutely right in this game. In Leipzig, I was fully wrong, and I have to admit that, uh, which is not, not such a tough task. I, I was expecting Hata to perform which they didn't, but this can also happen on the day. I mean, and it's still not this uh, hopelessly far away, right? 0.14 goals in favor of Leipzig. So I was, uh, I had a lot, lot of better bets than this one, for example, on, on as I would have had on, on Leipzig, with 0.42 goals and still losing. So in Hannover, I was absolutely right. I couldn't have been better because this was just this more awful this was you know, really the weakest side of all in Schalke. I mean, I mean, Nuremberg, Augsburg, you can say they, they were both in trouble and not a great game, but Schalke were the worst by far. <laughs> this was just awful. And, and um, still I lose here, so I was wrong, right, but I lose here, I'm even, no, not counting this one. So uh, if we look at the final result, I'm still losing because I lose these two, one I was, I'm right to lose, and the other one I'm not. Uh, I didn't know this uh, final result um, until I, I'm, I was checking this. Um, I wasn't watching, looking down there, right? I'm going to enter it, and you see here how bad I am, really. 2,000 minus 2,500. It's not getting better. But here what I would argue again, here I was wrong. It's a nil one, but as I said, in reality, I would have been a lot happier if I would have been wrong in this comparison here.
uh, if I mean if I would have lost here and then admitted to that I had been wrong. So you see how difficult it, it is even to express that. I would have been happy to lose the money here and win some real money and then admit that I was wrong in this comparison. I was wrong here, no matter what. I still want some money, more or less virtual money. Here I was In view of the result, you have to say you were close to a heavy win. In view of the stats, you would have to say 0.09 is still meaningless, but then I would have to say, well, maybe, and it was not that market was closer. So I'm, I'm, I simply have to say I was right here, because a result was close. Freiburg knew that they were on a good score line, so, score line, so maybe they allowed some more chances for Bayern than they would have if they would have been a goal down or two goals down because then they just uh, say let's play football we are not defending uh, anymore or we I mean we just play football right so I was right he was wrong right wrong this is too clearly in favor of whereby I just had to avoid the draw, I think, right? So I was right, no, I have to say then, because Gladbach would have been as good. So I was right, so it's 2-1 now. In Nuremberg, I was right, 3-1. And Werder, those stats are too clearly against them. So I have to say I was wrong, so 3-2. In Dortmund, I was very right. Avoid the draw, very good closer, a lot closer to Wolfsburg winning, which would have been massive. And by those stats, I must have been very close. And if you see that chance, it's fine. Here I was wrong, so it's 4-3 now. Here I was very, very right. So the most important one, 5-3. And here I was simply right. So it's, um, I, no, let's not count this, 5-3. I mean, this is neutral, 5-3. So I was still doing okay, still losing some money. In general, this match day was uh, was bad <laughs> for me, <laughs> starting with the Hoffenheim game, as I said. So I, I'm, I'm going to admit that. And it's not the only league that I, that I bet on, so I don't mind that much uh, if it happens. and. You get used to that after 30 years in business and you know it's uh, yeah it's still I'm, I'm always carefully observing this and watch this and uh, think about it and all those stats what do they mean which direction do they go also about the rules which is very important to understand um, uh, what can be wrong about that so anyway I'm gonna leave you with this and thanks for watching share like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> if you would be so kind. Oh, sorry, answering some questions. Uh, well, someone uh, asked me about this algorithm uh, behind that. Uh, that I, how do I calculate those expected and those, um, those things? I mean, I can't tell you all my secrets. Uh, or maybe I can, but uh, you know, this is still, uh, you know, I'm just doing it as a service here and maybe some, someone would get to know me and maybe ask, um, yeah, well, <laughs> support, uh, no idea, I mean, where, where, where I'm heading for, but of course there, you, you could get into touch with some people that do care and uh, might be interested in, in setting something up, something bigger or whatever it is. But um, <clears throat> how do I calculate it? I can't tell you all my secrets, but what I can say, or I can, I mean, here we do have those stats that I'm entering, right? There's those are the goals, here are the shots, here are the on-target uh, corners and so on. And you see a pretty fair reflection. I mean, here Leverkusen have an edge, of course, over expected anyway, but also over Hoffenheim simply in the game. On target they were better, crosses they were, corners they were better, crosses they were better, and even in possession they were clearly better, and also in tackles. 
So, I mean, then you wouldn't doubt so much that, that uh, the stats go, uh, simply say they are better. But I would like to add to that, um, that um, I, I'm, I'm trying to improve my system and I'm trying to uh, uh, yeah, improve, uh, yeah, well, you, you have to try uh, um, with whatever you do, right? You, you would do, anyone would do in business. I mean, always uh, staying the same uh, means uh, going backwards, right? So you have to improve to at least stay where you are. Um, and, um, and in this new algorithm, I would say it is important um, uh, to way to weigh and, and, and the weight of the, those things, right? If you talk about crosses compared to corners or possession, what is it? And there are those dangerous attacks and I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I have introduced this already. I didn't set it up uh, yet to, uh, it's in a matter of initialization and so on. The algorithms are there, but um, um, then I would have a, a period of testing this because it's, it's um, well, the weighing of those parameters, right? And if you have dangerous attacks and dangerous free kicks and things like that, penalties, which is also in probabilities and adjusting those probabilities, because if, yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's a complex system. Um, but um, the weighing of those parameters is a very important um, thing to do there. And what is a dangerous attack compared to a dangerous free kick? How would you weigh those against each other? And if you have those complex set of parameters and you have, well, you could, you could try yourself and adjust the, the, the weighing of those parameters, then you could, I mean, you could test for ages. But for that, we would have the AI, artificial intelligence, which could work out by itself, by adjusting here a parameter, there a parameter, then another one, another one, and try to, well, to, to, to find out the weighing all on its own. And, and um, I, I know, I, I got someone who's, who's uh, interested in that and they would like to do that and he knows and understands that. I, I do myself too and I think, uh, I know what to do, but I'm busy with other things, so what can I do? But um, um, this weighing of parameters and to work this out with artificial intelligence, that would be an exciting thing to do. And how I would rate that those settings or this weighing of those parameters is getting better. What would the computer do to say, oh, now it's good, now it's working? This is very simple because you try to lower those deviations from the result, right? So, uh, I mean, here I have a pretty huge deviation, you could say, right? If it's 1.16, 1.78, and the real result is 4.1, then you could say, well, this is terrible algorithms. I could have told you this game is going to end 4.1 or something like that. I mean, uh, then I have a huge deviation. But if I would weigh those parameters and the computer would try to adjust those parameters, as I said, the weighing of them, and then there could be 1.22 and 1.65 or something like that. Then you would say, well, this was a lower deviation. So those, this setting of parameters was better for this game. If you have thousands of game coming, games coming in and then all those stats, then you would say, well, the deviation, the total deviation from the real result which you have here, right? We have uh, 24, 5, I would have that in, in those columns here somehow. But you, you would try to, to, um, to come closer to the real results with those settings. And the closer you come, the better your parameters are. Even if you would still say, I mean, I would still say Leverkusen should have won, no matter which algorithm is the, you, you're gonna uh, um, <laughs> shoot on with that. I mean, there's no way that uh, those as X goal do, goals do after the game that they say, yeah, they had so many excellent chances, so they were expected to be this good. This uh, I would never do, but um, 
but um, and now I can't explain all that. But uh, the thing is, this uh, the, the the weighing of those parameters is a major. Um, I mean to to find the perfect way. The way I do it now is, I think it's going very well. And of course, I could show you also the total stats and so on. And although here we have a, some heavy deviation uh, in total, we don't have, maybe I could even do that, but that wouldn't prove a lot. But we can have a look here quickly and say, um, this is Germany 1. And here you see, I expected 2.97 goals. There should have been 3.02. There really had been 3.12. So you can say, well, this letter is going up. It's very uh, exciting football. It's, they always score goals. They go forward, they try to score, and so on. It's also happening, but I would say, well, those deviations, they are still within range. And actually, this season, the balls are just going in. Uh, and, and, well, yeah, I couldn't have expected that because you can compare last season's average and so on. Go ahead and do it. I, I can do that. It's home sites, 1.69. They should have scored 1.71. They did score 1.76, which uh, uh, contributed, as I said, by this last match day because those 24 goals, if you take them off, it's 403. If you put on a 12, it's 415. It would have been about this value, so it's all coming from this last match day that they scored too many. Away sides, they always had been better, and actually here uh, they did. They scored just five in the last match day, which lowered this value, as I said here. It lowered this one, uh, so uh, altogether it's just some more actions home and away. So I'm not far away, I mean, not at all, but show me a better algorithm. I'm not taking the one from X goals, which I explained as well. So now I'm off. I, I hope I answered this question and um, I'm trying to improve. Thanks a lot. Share like, no, I did it the other way. No, I said it like that. Share like, comment, subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.